Hello, in this video I'd like to try to show how I've been making these tensegrity tables. Uh, I'm a small metal fabrication shop and I've literally been making and selling one of these at least once a week. This one here is a tensegrity table with a custom top and here's the top right there. The guy is a motorcycle enthusiast and he wanted one with a skull and the top will fit right in the top like that. The table I'm going to show that uh, the construction is this one right here. This one, uh, the customer doesn't want a base in it and it is one I will go from start to finish, all the material, all the tools, uh, the processes, and the way I go about making the table. Uh, if you're looking for a welding video, uh, it's probably not the best one to go to. I don't uh, have a filter to show my welding technique. I use mainly TIG welding on these since it's cleaner and leaves less cleanup. This table here is a pretty solid table as well. It's not something you have to baby. You can see that it holds it pretty well up to abuse and we can even kick it over and it holds together. So it's, it's not something that needs to be babied and it'll stand up to a lot of abuse. And you can see the chain is not welded it's all tensegrity. The most weight I've tried to put on these, uh, I've not tried to uh, load them to destruction, but I've been able to load the top of them with 60 pounds and just with minimal distortion of the tensioning arms. So this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna go from start to finish, what materials I use, the processes I use and how I do it. Uh, probably be at least two videos because uh, I'm trying to show as much detail as possible. So uh, hang on and hope you enjoy the show. Now the first step I like to do is cut all the pieces that I'm going to need for the top and bottom out of the rectangular tubing. You want to make sure that these are cut on a real precise 45 degree bevel or else you're going to have a big gap to fill when you weld them up. That's pretty close. I use an Ellis 1600 bandsaw, but in a pinch, I have used my DeWalt chop saw. It doesn't make quite as nice of a cut and it's harder to get the angle just uh, perfect. When I set my saw, not only like do I like to use the included angle finder, but I like to put angle finder onto the blade to make sure I've got exactly 45 degrees. The blade that I'm using on the saw is a 10-14 uh, so it has uh, teeth set 10 teeth per inch and also 14 teeth per inch. When I'm cutting lighter stock like 11 gauge I like to make sure I've got a real good smooth cut so that's why I like to use this blade it's a bi-metal blade
the last piece is too short, so I save them all. I sometimes use them for practice because you can never have too much practice. And uh, I need all the practice I can get uh, welding these up. But you can use them for anything. I might uh, make a shorter table, but then I have to design the support arms um, at a different size and cut them out. So right now I'm going to just stick with a 20 by 20. So here's how the first practice piece turned out. It's okay, nothing fantastic about it. And it'll hold together and it won't fall apart. Definitely could use some more practice. Yeah. Probably a little bit too slow in the travel speed. So I have to pick it up. Maybe I'll bump up my amperage, maybe up to 120. Right now, I'm using 115, pretty much full pedal. So it's just a little bit less than uh, one amp per thousandths. Try a couple more pieces and we'll get the frame fit up. I've never tested this table to see how much weight it will hold, but it appears to be holding all eight of the top and bottom frames pretty well. Looks like the support pieces are just starting to bend just a little bit. You can see a little bit of a, it's not quite straight there, but you can see how the chains all are loose. So it'll hold up, uh, be great for a, a lamp stand or you can put your drinks and whatnot on it. It uh, seems to be uh, fairly strong. Okay, my wife had just come up and bothered me, so I'm back at it. 
I had a tech break on the back side here and this is gaps a little bit wide here so I need to work on getting that closed up. It's uh, square uh, might have been just a little bit out on the uh, cutting. So we'll finish tacking her up and uh, get the other one tacked. Here's the tack that broke. Okay. Patch that. Number two. Okay, I'm trying to get some shots of this welding up. I'm gonna get my spectacles on. You can't see. Okay, now I'll try to get a couple shots of the inside corner welding. Okay, all the inside corners are welded, outside corners are welded, and both of these are welded. So, next step. Okay, here's the two finished top and the bases. And I need to pick uh, one side on each of them that's going to show. Uh, I could grind them and uh, have them smooth, but I always like to leave one side with the weld showing. Uh, I think it gives it a more aggressive look. Uh, what I'm looking here is on this one, I think this one, the top, will be on this side. I know what you're thinking, you probably wouldn't want any of them. But uh, I think this is the best on this one. A little bit crooked right up in here. And this top here, I think will look fine. Since what I have to do, we have to lay out here on all four sides and put a hole. And that's where we'll attach our chains. So we need to have a nice smooth spot to drill. Okay, next will be uh, next up will be the drilling. I'll show you how I do that and what my measurements are and what I use. <laughs> 